You want anarchy. Welcome to the relaunching of the News from Underground show. And today we have we have some, some awesome uh, end caps here from local from, from the city of Richmond. Um, I'm Cal Molinay. My name is Isaac. And I'm Phil. They're a local <laughs> Richmond resident anarchist. And so in the relaunching of this show of the News from Underground, we're going to talk a lot of uh, the same as we had before. You know, we're going to pre present a lot of uh, perspectives of news story coverages, of topics, of uh, questions that you may have, if you put in the comments uh, below, of, uh, from, from, from anarchy, right? You know, you have a lot of different shows to talk about. Here's the Republican point of view. Here's the Democrat point of view. Here's, <laughs> here's the socialist point of view and communist. And here you will be presenting uh, consistency. We're presenting the anarchist point of view. Um, be against always uh, to never compromise our principles for politics. And so with that, we're going to talk about, I guess, really quickly, we're going to go over some announcements, which would be a lot of fun to do. I want to thank Larry first for the intro for this video. <laughs> it was, uh, that's, that's, uh, it's good stuff. I guess you're a local musician too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to do a lot of collaboration and have just having really cool soundtracks and sound bites coming in as well. Uh, if you guys like to contribute, you know, feel free to send us a message with, uh, with what you have. Uh, the second announcement would be Liberty Hangouts. We have, so it used to be that uh, if you want to like get in touch with local Richmond anarchists, you have to uh, wait a month for the Freedom Gathering, all right? But if you miss that, then you have to wait two months. Now we have weekly opening hours for people who want to meet and hang out uh, with other anarchists. Uh, want to learn more about this? You know, come by every Monday, Wednesday at the Shatoshi Anarchy Garden. The details will be in below. Uh, from 7 30 to 10 30 p.m and uh come learn more about anarchy um come philosophize and uh drink coffee and be merry right BYOB also as well and so with that we're going to start off with the first news uh of the day uh the first one we're going to cover is you could be thrown into a cage for not registering your drone this week the federal aviation administration announced a new drone registry as of december 21st Failing to register a drone that weighs more than 0.55 pounds, half a pound, roughly the weight of two sticks of butter, can land you in a cage for up to three years and subject you to 27, over $27,000 in civil extortion fines and, of course, over $250,000 in criminal extortion fines. Um, you know, this was inevitable. Inevitably, when you have a lot of, you know, is you're having a little too much freedom, time to regulate it. Time of passing laws to control and restrict what you can and cannot do with your own property. Uh, you've been having too much fun in the past few years, you know, flying with your drones, right? Uh, the, the funny thing I, I saw in here, Mr. Thomas, according to the FAA, this registry will promote a safety culture, a safety culture uh, among recreational drone operators and deter bad actors from flying their drones dangerously. Mm -hmm. Very hypocritical from a government that has used a lot of these drones very dangerously. Yeah. Right. Uh, you've had, a, I don't know if it was a drone dropping, but it was a bombing, of course, in a hospital overseas of Obama uh, giving that order and murdering peaceful people. Uh, aviation, you know, mechanical uh, flights of uh, engines out there. Uh, and of course, you have drone strikes here, for example, in Pakistan. Out, out of the men, there's, they do it in. Yemen, they do in Afghanistan, and they always uh, end up murdering peaceful people. Of course, the government will call it collateral damage, right? Uh, if you did it, it's terrorism. But if the government does it, eh, they call it by a different name. Uh, so in Pakistan, it's interesting. So drone strikes, uh, since 2004, they're murdered over 400 people, civilians they call them, uh, who were not the target. And this included over 100 children. Over 100 children. Um, of course, this also includes a lot of, uh, you guys heard like, of course, drone strikes hitting even uh, weddings, <laughs> no. right? Um, happens all the time. That's indiscriminately, you know, so, so talk about, you know, this organization trying to tell you, hey, safety first, <laughs> don't use it dangerously, but <laughs> you have a long history of doing that yourself. Um, there's no credibility there, right? It's, uh, again, it's all about restricting you as, as a slave. Um, has nothing to do with safety. If it has something to do with safety, they wouldn't be threatening you uh, with all these ridiculous extortion fines and years in cages. Right? That has nothing to do about your safety. That's just the FAA overreaching their boundaries and trying to find something to do. 
Right. You know, my favorite part is that they're actually breaking the law by passing this regulation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so they, they don't even follow their own rules. They don't even follow their own rules. The rules only apply to, well, the prison rules, I call them, right? The prison rules only apply to us, right? The rules don't apply to the prison wardens, and they can make it up as they go. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, so th that is an interesting point. Uh, Congress passed a law that said that the FBA cannot uh, pass a registry for you to register these uh, recreational hobby kit toys. Uh, and, and as you would as uh, anything that's over 50 pounds uh, flying in the sky. But, you know, the FBA has said, well, here's an exception in a wording that was too, so vague enough for us to redefine it ourselves. And, you know, it's not registering, it's not regulating. It's within our balance to of enforcement. And that's what you have right now. That's what's going on. Um, they just kind of bypass their own rules and as they see fit. Uh, I guess, of course, you can say, can they enforce this? Not really. Uh, there's too many drones out there. It's like, they don't really, I don't, I don't know if there are other FAA police out there. Okay. Did you see the drone with the flying net story? What's that? It was a big story recently. Um, so this is in light of, I think it was events in Paris where they have a drone that actually carries a net to capture smaller drones flying <laughs> through uh, governmental buildings. <laughs> a drone carrying a net. Right. So that, there's your answer. Yes, they, they can enforce this. Um, I guess if they're all good, they would have their own drone. Here's the question though. Yeah. How will they know whose drone it is if they haven't registered? Sure. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, so it's very difficult to kind of find these people. Mm. Uh, you just, you know, make no claim. Well, I don't know who that belongs to. You know, either remotely. Mm. Um, kind of reminds me of that South Park episode where like the the police drones versus the civilian drones going after one another and trying to figure that out. Um, I think there was a guy who got in trouble because he attached like a flamethrower to his drone and was just kind of going around just showing how awesome you can get out of a drone. Um, that or maybe you can say birds are aligned with the FAA because there's a lot of videos of birds attacking drones too and, <laughs> and knocking them down from the sky. That's their enforcement, birds. <laughs> Trained birds. Um, so, you know, why are they doing this? Because uh, they're bored. They have nothing else to do. It's, it's like the, the same reason for ABC here in Virginia. Um, the, the, here's our title, here's our mission. Uh, how can we take this uh, mission and the objectives and spread it so broadly to include different areas and we can uh, overstep you know, our initial boundaries. Um, make themselves relevant, make themselves cool, make themselves seem like, uh, like they can also be cops, they can also uh, be on that uh, cop show, what was it called? Uh, not Reno, I don't know. Yeah, cops. <laughs> they make it seem like they have a badass uh, title to go along with the job. And that's what ABC does. Uh, it hurts a lot of peaceful people just for the victim's crime of uh, holding glass if you're underage. But of course, even if you're underage, they'll give you a gun and send you overseas to, to murder peaceful people. Right. Well, I think to a certain extent, it's also security theater. I mean, you know, everybody is afraid of, of something being unregulated and something happening is, a, oh, what if they crash this or do this or do what? So they get a lot of, um, they get a lot of carte blanche on on what they can regulate just simple for the simply for the fact of fear from people that if oh if this isn't regulated you know if you don't regulate milk then you know you might get milk without pus in it and you know we'll all die because of i don't know salmonella or something right you know so uh, i think it's a similar uh, situation with this I, I think people are just uh, they actually do have a certain level of of um, uh, not consent, but, you know, desire from many people to protect them mm. from something they can't actually protect them from. Right. Uh, the organization that is the most, uh, dangerous, part of the most dangerous culture out there is trying to talk oh, yeah. about safety. Uh, you yeah, slap the sticker that we're government and all that makes everything okay. Yeah. yeah. We're okay with fake authority killing people, but you know, Joe Blow on the street with a drone that might, you know, look down my blouse, that's, I can't have that. That's not, that's not right. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, sexual harassment is not okay, but if it's done by government, by TSA agents, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, sexual harassment, perfectly fine. 
Um, and another story we'll cover soon, like uh, that pedophile from Manassas uh, who took this pictures of uh, this kid. Turns out that he was a pedophile. Uh, turns out that uh, no, there, there TSA has a, a record number of pedophiles in in you know in their ranks. Yeah. I mean that's like it, it's it's like candy for pedophiles. It is the place to go. Yeah, yeah. If you want a job, being if you want to get paid, <laughs> that's where you go. TSA. Um, and, I, and I guess the, the last thing I guess uh, we'll talk about is um, it's interesting. So like, what if you were flying this toy in your own backyard, right? In your own, in your own property, right? Do you have to register? Would that be considered a felony? According to the TSA, yes, <laughs> you are a criminal, you are a bad guy, you are evil, uh, how dare you fly or use your own property on your own property. <laughs> um, that's, that's overreaching, that's, 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 uh, that's our way to make sure everything's criminalized and uh, further the way out from there. Right? You're always a criminal under the government's eyes mm -hmm. and it's up to you to prove your innocence. Um, yeah, that, uh, the guy in the mall that uh, used to sell those little remote control helicopters, He's like a multiple life sentences now. It's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I knew it. I knew that guy was a criminal. Right, <laughs> right before our very eyes. He was shifty. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, second one up is um, Fed ends zero rate era. Single uh, signals four quarter point increase in 2016. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the first time in almost a decade, a widely telegraphed move that Chair Janet Yellen said would be followed by gradual tightening as officials watch for evidence of higher inflation. The Federal Open Market Committee unanimously voted to set the new target range for the federal funds rate at 0.25% to 0.5%, up from 0 to 0.25%. Policymakers separately forecast an appropriate rate of 1.375% at the end of 2016. Um, so what normally happens is that the Fed drops the, uh, the interest rates in a crisis and then they raise them up a few years later when things look like they're calming down. But uh, that didn't really happen this, this time. Uh, and what happened was uh, they, they kept it for like a record amount of time. I think it was seven years, mm -hmm. uh, just zero interest rates. And um, of course, Bernanke said that this was because, uh, because of slow growth. And Yellen, in her recent speech, said that that's what caused the slow growth. So that gives you a hint of how much they know what they're talking about. Yeah. And um, so, so some people are actually ex uh, expecting a cyclical downturn soon. So they, they think this is actually a really badly timed um, rise in interest rates. Um, and some, like myself, are speculating that this actually isn't going to last very long. I don't think this is actually going to hold. I think at the first sign of trouble, they're probably going to pull a Bernanke and say, oh, no, never mind, we're just, you know, we're going to put the interest rates down because they really don't, you really don't want something to happen on Obama's watch. They don't right. want, you know, they don't want the Bush, you know, end of the end of term tank to uh, happen while Obama is still in office. That would be someone else's problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got to be, you know, I don't know, Bernie's problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or Trump. God. The next guy down the line. Uh, what do you think about the uh, effect that it has or hasn't had uh, on Bitcoin? Oh, I don't know. It, it's, it's, a lot of people are, are saying something kind of counterintuitive. So, um, Usually when this happens, when they, uh, when the federal funds rate rises, this is kind of like a, you know, a, it makes credit more expensive. Um, so that's actually good for the strength of the dollar, you know, theoretically. But um, people are actually saying, uh, um, suggesting you longed on Bitcoin, which would be more of an indication of a weak dollar if Bitcoin's going to go up. So uh, I don't know if that's because of, fears of um like the what's you know what like uh, berwick likes to say about the uh of rising rates initiating the dollar crash i, I don't really buy that right. but apparently that's a, a fear that's that's um going around quite a bit and i think the the logic behind that is that you know you know, banks are holding on to their money and not lending it out because it's they're not making any money if they lend it out so they're just hoarding but if they're hoarding, then they're not making any money at all on it because, you know, so it doesn't really make sense to me. But 
Uh, a lot of people are saying that this is a, a, a bullish sign for Bitcoin. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't really seen much of, a, I guess, a reaction on that market. Yeah. Well, it, right. I actually was. I was watching the um, the futures right when it happened. Uh, I got a beep on my uh, on on my indicator saying that Bitcoin had actually dropped like I think five dollars oh, or so. Yeah. But uh, which it's it's not a huge drop, but it's significant for for uh, how it was moving prior to that, you know, right. for over the day. So uh, I think that was a, there was a little bit of a response there, but I don't know. Um, Not as dramatic. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it definitely wasn't dramatic. And it, and it rose up pretty well almost immediately after it, so. Right. I had a friend on Facebook who was saying if, uh, if they raise the interest rates, he's gonna <laughs> move out into the woods, because it affects uh, mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. you know, so that goes up, so even though uh, your interest may go up. Uh, other areas of cost for other people uh, is not is not a net gain for them as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know that they're not actually going to do it until January anyway. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see how the uh, what what the actual effect is in that. Right. Right. I guess we'll wait, wait uh, on the market react to that. Uh, I guess you mentioned like this might be a way to kind of recover from the bubble, uh, housing bubble kind of crash. Uh, no, I, th I, th well, I don't know. Band -Aid. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what they were. They were trying to help us recover from the housing crash in the in the beginning. So if anything, this would actually uh, go against that. Um, but it's they're doing it so incrementally. That they're they're being careful with it, um, but what I think happened is that they've they've sort of reinflated the the housing bubble a little bit because mm -hmm. what happened was I mean the whole six year uh, or six or seven year zero interest rates was in response to the the housing crash in two thousand eight anyway, um, and I think what what they did by by holding that on for so long is start reinflating the the housing. Bubble because real estate is actually doing pretty well right now. So mm -hmm. real real estate investment is up, uh, and um, automotive investment like people are buying cars too. So mm -hmm. uh, and and Yellen actually mentioned that, but you know, of course they're buying cars and houses because that's you buy that stuff on credit. Right. You both yeah, yeah. buy that stuff on credit, and credit is cheap. So of course they're going to be buying. <laughs> and she she puts this forth as as this really great signal for the economy and she talks about jobs uh jobs growth and stuff doesn't bother mentioning that you know all the jobs growth has been in part time right for the most part and you know yes unemployment is pretty good but labor force participation is just pitiful mm -hmm. i mean labor force participation is is you know abysmal right now so yeah, from the, uh, what do you call it, the hydra's mouth. <laughs> yeah, from the, directly from the hydra's mouth. All right. You chop one head off and another one comes. All right. It's mm -hmm. the inevitable. Um, so what do we have next here? Adidas created this 3D printed shoe out of plastic waste we throw in the ocean. We've seen 3D printing technology construct actual working bridges real time, build elaborate decorative accessories for homes, create hemstone for home construction, produce prosthetics for amputees, and manufacture working firearms. Medical scientists have been able to print 3D heart structures using off the shelf technology. That is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, I guess the, when, when did the first like, 3D print come out? That's like what, four years ago now? Uh, well, well, they had. Um, They've had similar things for prototyping for decades, but um, like public use of 3D printers is, was very recent. It was like 2013 mm. or something. Maybe, maybe, no, maybe 2011, 2012. So. so 3D printing is kind of old news, but recently the second largest sportswear manufacturer in the world, Adidas, announced plans to release 3D printed sneakers made from trash that we've thrown in the ocean. This prototype of, is made of ocean plastic, recycled polyester, and fishing nets found in the ocean illegally. 
Um, so. um, according to Adidas, the goal for customers is to be able to walk into the Adidas store, run briefly on a treadmill, and walk out with a custom 3D printed running shoe. Um, the shoe would be flexible, an exact copy of the runner's foot, matching every crevice and groove and contour. Um, so that's also an improvement in shoes in general. But what doors does a uh, 3D printing open to guys like us? Um, how expensive are these machines? Expensive, yeah. right? <laughs> I guess you could say like the first uh, plasma flat screen TV was thousand of dollars, and over time it came cheaper, right? I don't know if I can it afford it. Didn't take too long, either. Yeah, it didn't take too long. Yeah, like for first Friday, so I'm like, giving this stuff away for like two hundred dollars. I got this for like two hundred dollars. <laughs> it would have cost a lot more than that. I guess for me economically, um, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. But to kind of enjoy the byproducts, you know, people kind of bring printing them out and you can buy the stuff, that's pretty cheap. My first encounter with uh, three printers was in Chicago with like one of the most smartest person in the world, her name's Alina, and we went to this like underground restaurant that uh, I guess was not, was kind of off the books and they 3D printed the food. <laughs> now the menu was 3D printed and then after like we were looking at the menu and then the, the waiter says, Yo, you can now eat the menu. <laughs> Um, so that was my first experience with 3D, just with, with food, and uh, mm -hmm. that was uh, greatly uh, enjoyable. Um, I guess for us, I guess entertainment, I guess resource-wise, but running-wise, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, trying to make use with all the waste that's out there in the ocean, and and I guess I would put back, you know, why is there a lot of waste in the ocean? Because the ocean isn't privatized, right? There's just no one there who can claim ownership to kind of hold anyone liable for trashing that property. Um, that those I think about international laws prohibits anyone from doing so. Um, yeah, well, I mean that's not even I mean that's not even specifically necessary. Uh, so you don't even have to um, to establish property rights over an ocean in order to to prevent that. Uh, you just have to not have the government involved. <laughs> right. And and this is evidenced in in situations like um, uh, fishing and things like. Um, uh, I think it was Ireland had, had these, uh, had, um, I think cod fishermen that would just, you know, they were fishing purely no, no government restriction or anything. And for years and years and years and years, they kept it up because they had a vested interest in keeping, you know, the, the fish population at a certain level. And the government came in and, and established fishing rights for this, these ponds and they just dried it up in like a year and just none there. Were, so create this artificial competition, like now you have like limits on how much you have to get and have to have to rush now right. to get that. Well, it's, yeah, it's like you stuff. have, you know, this section of time and this section of time or this area of the lake. And so they just gather as much as they can, you know, to, to beat out the other guy and to make sure that they have the highest, the highest yield possible rather than, you know, thinking about it in the long term, like, okay, we need to keep this up, you know, for you know, everybody needs to keep this thing up. Mm -hmm. So we just let's not be a dick and fish this thing to to, to death. Right. So you know it's it you don't even necessarily have to establish like um, property over over given areas of of uh, ocean. Just don't apply violence to it. Don't apply you know this this uh, um, false authority to it. Right, that's uh, why like the bison, American bison, was, was nearly driven through extinction. There was no reserve of private property, government, and a lot of all these sort of things to occur, and nearly just like it was done, they're almost dead. Um, mm -hmm. Private raising of these bisons and then private lands is what brought back the population from the brink of extinction. And because of private interests is why now you today you can enjoy bison burgers. Uh, there's so much of an abundance, now they can kind of go out there and um, and enjoy what they taste like, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, same with da endangered speci uh, species hunting in general. Like, you know, um, in places that, uh, you know, like in Africa with, with um, tigers and, and whatnot, you know, they have big, big game hunting farms and they're, they're, they're the best, uh, or not farms, but big, big game hunting, um, uh, you know, private, privately owned land. And they make sure to keep the 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 stock up, right? So they can keep making making money because they don't want you to kill all. Of, I mean, they don't want to just kill off all the 
the species so that they don't have that source of income here. All right. So. And usually they took they uh, give you like a fee if you want to do hunt and you hunt like the oldest one outside of the prime, mm -hmm. uh, a few a few years away from their death. But that fee that they pay to hunt that one particular animal is enough to like sustain the entire ecosystem there and to sustain all the other animals for them to continue breeding and mating and, and growing right. um, uh, and prospering. So I guess for, for Adidas, Adidas and shoes, are you a runner? Um, usually barefoot. Barefoot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you know, these things are supposed to be flexible, so. No, I agree. I think, I think barefoot is like the way to go. I had a, mm -hmm. have a pair of shoes that uh, mimics uh, that as well. So like when you run, you're, you usually run on the tip of your toes, right? Not on the balls of your feet, you know, so people kind of run, I guess, hitting and going like that. But on sand, you're, you're running a different natural way. Um, so like get some uh, get some garbage and make your own custom made vibrams. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to take these steps. How how do we get involved ushering in this new decentralized system of agorism? How do we get three D printers into the hands of the agorists and uh, start networks? Well, three D printers are actually getting more and more affordable. So so I think I've seen uh, one that was down to like two hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's like a base you know, model and it's. Small, so it could probably only really build trinkets, but um, you know, it's a step. It, so, I mean, it seems like a huge deal. If I am able to get this machine, all I have to do is work to acquire um, natural or uh, resources to make into other things, and I no longer have to go through, you know, as many right. outside suppliers. Um, well, that's what I'm really looking forward to is the recycling machine, the, the machine that, that somebody will inevitably build that does this for us, that takes, you know, you, you put your old soda pop can or, or your, you know, whatever plastic garbage that you have, you dump it in it and it makes it into the filament for 3D printers. You know, I'm looking forward to that happening. <laughs> because then we will be, you know, that will be extraordinary for, for you know, even for green, uh, the green folk, you know, for recycling. Because you recycle everything. Right. You, know, you you use this to, to recycle your old uh, plastic, you use composting to recycle your old food and, and stuff. So it's, you know... It's like that Back to the Future thing where these trash kind of help power the machine. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Fusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think that's something I think at some point we should have <laughs> in the Satoshi Garden here um, as an experiment to show because I think it also showcases the, I guess, maybe the army uh, against IP, right? Um, in terms of recreating uh, products that people have patented, but that, that maybe is a story for another time. But but people with uh, with patents are saying that you're not allowed to create or change uh, resources that you have already at hand without their permission, because they make a claim that you have stolen from them, but nothing was stolen. So I think three D printers does a really good deal in, in challenging that notion. Uh, that it, that's it's insane that you're not allowed to use your own resources to create things, to change your environment, to change your own resources, to reshape them. Um, now that it's being very easy for anyone to do, I guess that's like the, the thing with most people are talking about, with like you can also 3D print guns, <laughs> right? Mm. So now there's outside the realm of uh, government control and regulation. And that's the last thing they want. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. I think it leads to a lot of uh, freedom that it's difficult to find elsewhere outside of these these cages, outside of these tax farms. Um, but yeah, I guess I'd get a Adidas shoes myself. You can already pretty much uh, 3D print drones, so that goes back to the first. Drones, <laughs> yeah. Try to make me register that. Right. <laughs> right, yeah, because uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult for the FAF to kind of follow through with every drone that's made and see where they're going to and where they're processed and who's now the new owner of these drones. When now, especially, you can just 3D print one. Um, it has no serial number and it has no uh, markings uh, for their source. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's kind of like close to the end of times of the state finding it very difficult to control now all these people because uh, it's uh, over encumbered by, by that. Like even with the uh, IRS so encumbered, like there's there's so much for them to do. There's not enough people for them to do what they do extorting people. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's outside their bounds. I think right now it's just a lot of fear tactics trying to scare you because that's, that's all they have. Well, it's always, I mean, they've never really had control. It's always been. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and, very true. 
it's been, you know, yeah, you gotta make sure you're not to do these certain things, but for the most part, you know, you can't control people. I mean, it's... Yeah, that's why you have to go through thousands of hours of indoctrination. Yeah. <laughs> try to control whether you're young first. Because it gets so difficult if you try to introduce it later in their life. Yeah. Was that uh, all the, the topics there? Oh, it's just about it. Unless we want to talk about um, steps we can take towards agorism and how that would help um, dispel the myth of the state in the mind of you know general population. How are normal people seeing these events? Um, is there a way we can show there's a good way to use drones? Um, the government's li limiting our ability to act freely and you know help ourselves and others. Um, yeah, the, the market wants to use drones to deliver pizza. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amazon yeah, has. Yeah. I mean, Amazon has has run into so much trouble with the FAA and the government just trying to get their drone delivery. You know, that's. I mean, I think that's why they have the flex thing now because they can't they can't get the drone program off the ground. Not right. because they can't make the technology, because the technology is there, but because the government is. Full yeah. of tyrants. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, USPS, uh, United States Postal Workers, uh, behind the scenes, trying to prevent that because they don't want oh, yeah. some of their, you know, their illicit profits. The and U.S. Postal know. Union. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be out of a job from being on welfare. Dude, you failed with Uber. Don't even try it with Amazon. Amazon right. will be. You will lose. Sorry. No, that's that a good yeah. point. Yeah, the market wants to create this awesome way to enjoy life, to uh, transport uh, packages and property. The government, on the other hand, when they use the same technology, is always to ruin people's lives and, and murder them, and uh, like you've seen overseas, uh, harm people. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, uh, that's not the narrative they need to spin. They need to spin that it's you guys doing the dangerous stuff, not us. <laughs> what, what is their reasoning? Are they just throwing out buzzwords like dangerous drones, or...? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they have examples of things they're trying to deter? What's, what's happened? Uh... <laughs> I think I think it might be like some they feel like well you could use your drone to kind of invade the privacy of another person. It's like well if you're so much concerned about privacy you'd abolish the NSA, All right? If you have so much concern about respect for private property that you might use your drone to go over the private property, then you would abolish government itself. In existence violates private property constantly. Eminent domain says that's not your land. Uh, property taxes say that's not your house. Uh, is this another way, I think, to kind of spin a lot of this anguish away? Because government has always done something like trying to blame capitalism when it's always their fault, right? So <laughs> they need to blame the boogeyman that they created and just make sure the direction and anger is over there and never on the spotlight of themselves. Well, it's always fixing the problem they created. Right, you, yeah, you, yeah. You need us to fix this problem that exists. <laughs> we yeah. call ourselves the government. We didn't do. This wow. magical word called the government means yeah. that we're unsolved, we're angels. <laughs> we're incorruptible. Um, so yeah, I think this is another form of distraction, another form of control, another way to kind of redirect the side of hand for the people who are, paying, who are trying to understand this world and cast the problems or elsewhere instead of so no one ever looks at government being the problem itself. Um, but yeah, I think I'd probably get one of these Adidas shoes if they have, uh, you know, let you run on the sand like this other pair of shoes. I think Nike produced them. Nike Zero, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's great. You can just run like you would on sand, then the ball uh, to the front part of your feet. There's a lot of people who are kind of running weird and not perfectly. Um, but yeah, I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. Um, I guess, and then with that, uh, I would say that kind of wraps up our news stories. Uh, if you if you like to help support us to get a three D printer, uh, please donate to us so and you know help us uh, grow with that. Uh, it'd be a great thing to have here and show people how uh, the, the beauty of like defeating IP and different ways to, to showcase how we can uh, create our own I guess products <laughs> I guess in that way. Um, but yeah, no. But, that, this is great. Thanks uh, for, for being part of this. This is awesome. Thank you guys for, for watching. Thank you for your participation in this. If you guys have any questions, put it in the comment section below and we'll get to those questions. Like any questions about how anarchy would work or any other area which you're kind of stuck on and trying to figure out. Um, we have good people here to dissect that and to share our experiences um, and answer those questions. 
So it's not just news stories, it's any topic as well. Uh, so with that, I'm Kyle Molone. I'm Phil. And Isaac. So you guys have a victory party and take good care. Responsibility, yes, it's still a home. We should know by now.